and so it was a lie about my age and it was so funny that he was upset because he thought he had us. Mm -hmm. He thought, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm not that age. So that's, that's what, what happened with us. So let's, let's stop for a minute because that's interesting. How did you know the business of music outside of playing music? How did you know, know that? Well, talking to people there told me, you know, uh, you're going to need your parents' signature. And I was like, no, I don't need my parents' signature because I'm on my own. I'm not with my parents. And I just knew that I took one and, one and two and put them together. Uh, said, I need my parents' signature. So he didn't get my parents' signature. So mm -hmm. this deal is not and more. Mm -hmm. So after he found out that he was still cool with you after no, that, no, no, he was he was cool with the uh, the other two members of the group, Brad and Eric. Uh, my thing was, I just didn't care. Okay. Uh, and at that time, I was like, well, I got Epic. Michael Jackson is on Epic. I want to be on Epic. The solo. Even though Solo had a, a big roster like the Whispers, the Callaways, uh, uh, Midnight Star, uh, The Deal, mm -hmm. Babyface, uh, them, uh, and Babyface was hot at that time. Dick Griffey loved that I was a producer. Well, I guess I wouldn't say I was a producer at that time. I would say that I could play music. Okay. and write lyrics. Mm -hmm. So he gave us songwriting deals and all that. And I was I was the only one actually walked away from everything because the group members called and say, yo, we're going to do, keep doing an album with Dick. I don't know if he had some kind of conversation with him. I said, so what about the Epic deal? He's like, nah, you can go to Epic. I'm gonna we're going to stay here, we did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa. And I felt like I was heart crushed. Like, man, I worked all this time to get this deal. I got a deal, and now I'm about to lose everything. And then one of my friends named Thunder, he was touring, he was touring with everybody. I mean, everybody. He'll jump from one tour to the next one. And he called me and said, man, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll hook you up. I said, man, I lost everything. Because we started at Thunder House. That's how we became a group. It wasn't Third Avenue. It was Westbound, some, something mm -hmm. like that. Thunder called me and said, yo, Bobby Brown, he needs some stuff for him. So I went and produced, like, Bobby artist and Bobby, me, I produce all smooth silk styles, uh, Bobby Brown, uh, the people he had on his list. We had uh, rented a we had rented a band house. We were all staying in a band house in Cincinnati. We call it 4309 Virginia. Somebody hollered, our song is on, you know. So we all ran upstairs and was crowded around the radio. And you know, I, I so, you know what you're doing in Cleveland. I'm doing, I'm doing in New York. I'm doing, you're doing this in, um, in um, Chicago. There's only a thousand of us. Hey, like a million of us, a thousand of us. It's, it's, it's a hundred million people. You should be able to spread that love to everybody. But the radio may have ten niggas they choose out. And that same ten artists keep going back and forth. You know what I mean? That's a problem because if you're in New York, you're like, yo, four artists from the South, four from Chicago. Two from the West, where's New York at? So you get two from the South, two from New York, two from Chicago, two from the Midwest, two from Europe, maybe. And then we got a better thing. Or maybe double it up, 20. You know what I mean? So that's the main problem. You know? His moral compass, all of it aligns with my own. Um, he is truly, he truly cares for the people, all of us. And he's been working for all of us his entire career in the 1960s when somebody was working for Barry Goldwater, the racist, disgusting Barry Goldwater. I won't name names, but you know who I'm talking about. So I am so 
blessed and so excited to be a public servant. I'm also a college professor, as Dee said, and that is my first love, to be able to impart knowledge. I teach African American history, urban studies, and even though I'm a historian, they let me dabble in a little politics every now and then, so I teach a few political science class. But I think the gift of teaching is the best gift that we can have. Each one teach one. We should be able to impart knowledge and strengthen people. You know the saying that talks about you can give a man a fish or you can teach them how to fish. I believe in teaching folks how to do for themselves.